Kublai Khan was the greatest Mongol emperor after Genghis Khan, having also founded the Yuan dynasty in China. As head of government, the Mongol Empire reached its greatest territorial extent, becoming one of the largest empires the world had ever seen. Kublai Khan was a wise ruler and led many peoples and nations, adapting different traditions to his own rule. Kublai Khan was born on September 23, 1215, in the present-day region of Mongolia. He was the grandson of Genghis Khan, founder and first ruler of the Mongol Empire. Kublai's father, named Tului Khan, was the youngest son of Genghis Khan and was an important Mongol leader. Despite his short leadership, Tului left an important legacy. He was seen as an efficient administrator, responsible for establishing the Mongol capital in Karakorum, present-day Mongolia. Under his leadership, the city became an important political, administrative, and cultural center of the empire. At the age of 12, Kublai was already a talented knight, and his reputation as a warrior increased as he grew older. He was given a privileged education, dedicated to the arts, politics, administration, and military strategies. Kublai was 17 years old when his father passed away. This caused him to have to take on many responsibilities at a young age. He was sent on diplomatic missions throughout the Mongol Empire, and gained military and political experience in various parts of the territory. In 1251, Kublai came to control the Chinese territories in the eastern part of the empire. When his brother, Munka, became the supreme leader of the empire, referred to by the title Great Khan of the Mongol Empire, Kublai organized a group of Chinese advisors to introduce reforms in the territories. He was also tasked with making expeditions to unify China under Mongol rule. Kublai was passionate about and influenced by Chinese culture. He told his advisors to use feng shui, an ancient Chinese technique to bring more harmony into the construction and decoration of houses and buildings. This method also allowed him to choose a site for the new capital, located in a strategic point between the Mongolian steppes and the more fertile Chinese plains. This place was called Shangdu, known as Zanadu by the European chroniclers. Unhappy with the progress of the war against the Song dynasty, Munka Khan led an expedition to western China in 1257. However, he was killed by Chinese defenders during a battle at Diaoyu Fortress, present-day Chongqing, in August 1259. With Munka Khan's death, the campaigns against the Song dynasty ended, as a dispute quickly emerged between the Mongol commanders over the successor. A civil war broke out between the two main candidates, Kublai and his younger brother Arik Boka, with both proclaiming themselves the new great Khan of the Mongol Empire. Arik Boka was popular for his conservatism, claiming to protect Mongol customs and traditions as a warrior and semi-nomadic people of the steppes. Kublai was seen as a defender of Chinese traditions, with a mindset too civilized for the standards of a Mongol leader. Supported by pro-Chinese groups, Kublai was elected Great Khan in 1260, but that did not end the conflicts with Arik Boka. The brothers spent the next four years fighting bloody battles. In the main encounter, Arik Boka's warriors were attacked by Kublai's troops in Karakorum, the capital of the Mongol Empire, suffering a crushing defeat at Kublai's hands. But Arik Boka's forces refused to surrender. It wasn't until late August 1264 that Aripoka was forced to admit defeat, surrendering at the city of Shangdu. Kublai became the undisputed great Khan of the Mongol Empire, ruling not only Mongolia and China, but also being an authority figure over the leaders of the Golden Horde in Russia, the Ilkhanates in the Middle East, and other smaller hordes scattered throughout the empire. Being great Khan was a prestigious title for Kublai, but the empire had already split into several khanates, each ruled by Genghis Khan's descendants. In 1264, Kublai Khan decided to move the capital of the empire from Karakorum to the Chinese city of Dadu, now Beijing, becoming the founder of the Yuan dynasty in China. He adopted various policies to rule China effectively and established a government that combined elements of Mongolian and Chinese cultures. Under his rule, China experienced a period of stability, with a focus on economic expansion, trade, infrastructure, and cultural development. Kublai was also known for accepting different religions in his territories and being a great advocate of trade, science, and the arts. 
He introduced the use of paper money throughout the empire and ordered the creation of a new alphabet for the Mongolian language, very similar to Chinese writing. Kublai also established a shipping system and developed river routes and canals to transport grain on the Yangtze River, thus feeding the growing population. In 1267, Kublai again attempted to subdue the Song Dynasty in southern China. The campaign was long, partly due to strategic difficulties. The terrain was difficult for cavalry, the great strategic asset of the Mongolian army. And the fortifications required new siege tactics, such as the construction of catapults and trebuchets. The option of making sea invasions, on the other hand, required a significant expansion of the navy. Despite these challenges, Kublai managed to conquer southern China at the naval battle of Yaman, which marked the Song dynasty's last resistance against the Mongol invaders. Kublai Khan was the first Mongol to rule all of China. Kublai established a new social structure by dividing the population into social classes. The Mongol aristocracy and the foreign merchant class were exempted from taxes and enjoyed special privileges. On the other hand, the northern and southern Chinese bore most of the empire's economic burden, forced to do much of the manual labor. Led by Kublai Khan, it was possible to establish direct contact between China and the West, made feasible by the Mongol control of the trade routes in Central Asia, mainly the Silk Road, which covered East African countries, Europe, the Middle East, and East Asia. In the early 13th century, many Europeans and Central Asians went to China. The presence of Mongol power also allowed many Chinese to travel freely within the Mongol Empire to Russia, Persia, and Mesopotamia. At the time, the best-known foreign visitor to China was the Venetian merchant and adventurer Marco Polo, who spent approximately 17 years living at the court of Kublai Khan, where he served as an administrative officer and diplomat in the imperial provinces. After returning to Europe, Marco Polo wrote about his experiences in the book The Travels of Marco Polo, where he described his adventures in Asia and documented important historical information about Emperor Kublai Khan and the Yuan Dynasty. Even with great authority as emperor and incalculable wealth, Kublai Khan's warlike nature was not suppressed by the opulent lifestyle of the Chinese palaces. Filled with a sense of restlessness, Kublai decided to head east in search of new lands to conquer. He managed to incorporate much of Southeast Asia, including Burma and most of Vietnam, but the new conquest cost the empire's coffers so much that, even with the tributes acquired from the defeated peoples, the Mongols made no real profit from these military endeavors. Kublai Khan sent Chinese ambassadors to Japan in 1268. The Mongol emperor made demands in gold and also wanted samurai warriors to be sent to China to serve in the army. To Kublai's surprise, his demands were entirely ignored by the Chinese, starting a new war for the conquest of Japan. The first invasion took place in 1274, when a large Mongol fleet arrived at the island of Kyushu in southern Japan. But a typhoon, known as the Kamikaze, hit the Mongol fleet, causing great destruction and forcing it to retreat. After the failure of the first invasion, Kublai Khan decided to launch a second invasion in 1281. An even larger and prepared fleet was sent to Japan. The Mongol forces faced strong resistance from the samurai and, for the second time, the Mongol fleet was hit by the Kamikaze Typhoon. The Mongols were forced to give up conquering Japan. At a later stage of his life, Kublai Khan developed excessive eating and drinking habits, especially after the death of his favorite wife, Chabi, and son, Junjin, crown prince and of whom Kublai was very proud. Kublai Khan ruled China for over 30 years until his death from natural causes in 1294 at the age of 79. The late emperor's body was taken to a secret location, probably in Mongolia, as was tradition. He was buried in an extravagant tomb filled with treasures. It has never been found. Kublai Khan was succeeded by his grandson, Timur Khan. Although the Mongol Empire faced decline after his death, Kublai Khan's legacy as a ruler and leader is remembered as a period of stability, cultural development, and global exchange. His story is a testament to the Mongol Empire's lasting influence and impact on world history.